Hey, everybody. Um, thank you so much for joining in Mel Mel's first book chat. And I plan on doing this every Wednesday. And I have four amazing authors with me today. Um, also, we are all um, EduMatch Publishing family. We have all published through EduMatch Publishing. And so um, I said, hey, does anybody want to join me for my first book chat? And they were like, yes. And so um, I can't wait to feature so many um, authors that are in my life that I consider good friends. I also am an author. My name is Melody McAllister. My first book that I wrote myself, I have a few other um, books that I've contributed to, is the I'm Sorry story that uh, my friend Rihanna Longoria illustrated. And so we're going to be talking about our books today. So thank you so much for joining us. And I am from Alaska. Um, all of my friends are from different places in the United States, and I'll let them tell you where they are. So our first guest, um, that is... Author Kristen Coppers, where are you coming from, Kristen? Hi, Mel. I am from Illinois, South Suburbs of Chicago. Awesome. Oh, and not even just the United States. Hello, Alice, where are you coming from? Hi, everybody. I am from Southern Ontario in Canada. Nice. And I'm so happy to be here. Yes. Hey, Mr. Dean Ganey, where are you coming from? Hello, all. I am from the city beautiful, Orlando, Florida. Awesome. And last but certainly not least, Miss Rochelle today. Poth, how are you doing today? I'm um, great, Melody. Thanks for having me on. And I'm from and Pittsburgh. You... <laughs> Pittsburgh. Oh, well, yeah, sorry. So we are all over the place. And um, it's great. Thank you all so much for joining our um, the commencement of Mel Mel's book chats. All right. And so we're going to be featuring um, your books today. And um, some of the things that we're going to talk about are why did you begin writing and kind of your path in writing? Hopefully this will inspire some other people who are considering writers or considering writing or um, have a book in their mind just to help people to understand about our books, but also understand about the process of becoming an author because it's something that most people can do. It's not like this some pie in the sky thing that nobody can really do, right? Right. I wish I was... <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, I'd be reaching up all the time. <laughs> That's right. Well, actually, we all have reached up. We have grabbed opportunities, right? Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So who, um, so the first thing we're going to talk about um, before we talk about our books is who or what inspired you to start writing um, and who would like to go first? All right, Dean, go I'm first. Right. Yes, <laughs> I will go first. Um, and since I'm going first, I guess I should mention, because it's kind of interesting, that I happen to be the, the first author that was published by Edgemont Publishing. Um, this is so true. So exciting uh, when it happened, because I didn't know it was going to happen. Um, but um, it was a conversation. And um, uh, it's interesting. I'll, I'm going to throw the name out there, because I know she probably won't mind. But I had a conversation with Sarah Thomas, of course, right? We're yes, about, the book boss lady. Yes, we were talking about, okay, well, you ever thought about making that into a book? And I said, oh, no, actually, I haven't. Um, I was blogging, uh, started blogging in May of 2015. And um, by that particular time I had a conversation with her, I had blogged quite a bit, um, but had no thoughts of even um, making this into a book. She put the, she dropped the nugget, she lit the flame, so to speak. Uh, and so I started thinking about it and eventually said, yep, I think I can do this. I think I can make it happen because really my blogs were coming out of me anyway. And the topics associated with what I was saying um, were the very topics that I chose to include inside of this book. So I think the first, first six chapters I think I had blogged about and was able to expand upon them. And then the last five chapters, they came right after I expanded the other ones. And so it was almost like it was meant to be from the very beginning. And a year and a half later, I believe it was. It was out. Wow. Thank you for sharing, Dean. That is awesome. So you began blogging and here you are an author today. Um, who else um, would like to share about like who or what inspired you to start writing? I can go. Or I'll or I'll just pick you. Go ahead, Rochelle. Oh, no. I was I always do the wait time. I was good. I was just about to say then you pick Dean's. I was like, all right. Uh, you know, I was thinking about that as you asked him the question, like, when did I start to write? But I mean, it goes back. I mean, as when I was a kid, I mean, my mom, I, you know, my mom had given me a, a diary to write in. And I mean, I was an only child. So I was writing these stories, you know, creating. I'm, I'm sure 
I still have one here. It's probably ridiculous to go back and read it now. But even in college, I was writing. And, and now that I can look back on it, I can see like I was writing reflections about my experiences and, and all of that. Uh, and then at one point, I think in college, I thought, you know what, I could write a book because I was reading like John Grisham and Mary Higgins Clark. And it's kind of like the whole Olympic thing. You, you see like, oh, it looks so easy. Then you go and you try and do like the ice skating thing and you're like laying down face first on the ice. You're like, totally can't do it. So I clearly couldn't write uh, like those authors and let that go until probably, I mean, probably about years ago, somebody had asked me to write a blog because I was using, and it was actually SurveyMonkey which is funny, and, and Dean <laughs> Dean has a monkey that I gave him, remember, a couple of years ago, um, but it was Survey Monkey. Wait, wait, you gave Dean a, a monkey? Not a real monkey. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just get that straight. It's Yeah, I, I don't have that kind of pull. I mean, if only, but uh, no, we were. I was using Survey Monkey in my class and just having students do like a quick assessment or something, and th that probably goes back maybe eight years now. And reached out to them to ask them a question, and they sent me some of the stuffed animal monkeys. But uh, they asked me to write a blog, and at the time, I think they said like five hundred words, and I thought, oh my gosh, that's so long. But it was tied into what my students were doing, and so that was the start of like blogging for me and just kind of building upon that over the years uh, and just sharing my experience. But before that, I thought, I don't even know what I would write about, but you're just writing about, you know, your reality, what you're experiencing and, and things that you're doing. So that's at least from, you know, diary as a child, John Grisham, and then Survey Monkey, and here I am. <laughs> right. I think that's great, Rochelle. And honestly, when I look at the Olympics, I never think, oh, that's easy to do. <laughs> never even. <laughs> hey, it's just me. There's I freeze. I was, I've never thought like, oh, that looks easy. But that's also because... I am who I am. Um, so, but that's cool. So, so far we have bloggers and like you, I also kept a journal when I was a kid and I wrote a lot of music, Rochelle, like in my journal and my diaries, I wrote so much music and like poems and everything like that. But um, Alice, what about you? How did you start writing? Yeah. So I, um, I sort of have a unique story because I have a math background as a lot of people know, I, I'm an honors math major. Um, but I also have a an English background, so I'm kind of have yeah, I'm on this uh, opposite side of the brain thing that people always find kind of um, surprising. But I I grew up um, writing a lot of stories. Like I was a storyteller. I liked to to be creative from a a really young age. I was writing stories, and that went all the way through to high school. And then I I did pursue math, but I um, I did a minor in English at the same time. So um, I've taught English and math in high school. And then uh, a need arose for the book idea for my my children's book. And I couldn't find one that matched this idea that I really needed to um, distribute to parents, like parents were looking for this idea. And so that that's where the, the idea came from. And I just thought I would try to write it on my own. And um, I did, and I'm glad that I did, because I think that uh, the story needed to be told and I, I had the ability to write it. Um, I just, I, I, there were a lot of other things that go into writing a book, not, not just writing the story, of course. So that, that came afterward, which was a little bit more work for me um, than I was expecting. But uh, the, the storytelling part for me was always a, a, a passion of mine. Right, and I love that you said that you're a math person and you're also an English person. Cause a lot of times we always feel like we have to, to pick a camp and stay there. But honestly, I'm with you. Like I love both subjects. Um, I think everybody in, in, in our meeting right now, we, we love it. Um, so thanks for sharing that because you don't have to be one or the other. We certainly don't no, want our students think, to think that. No kids think they got to pick one side of the brain and stick with it. And that's a, uh, that's not true. And um, I think it makes you stronger in both, both aspects. If you can, if you have a, a little bit of both. I've always been really interested in the languages and English is not my first language because my parents are immigrants. Um, so the languages is always, always a big deal to me too. So I kind of have all this stuff intertwined in my brain all the time. That is awesome. Thank yeah. you so much. Before we go to Miss Kristen Coppers, I want to share some comments. Um, Dave says, love that blogging is writing. You are published as soon as you click submit and let others see what is in your head. And we all know that that's a scary thing when we first do it. And sometimes it's still scary, even though we've done it for quite a while. Elizabeth says, I'm, I love hearing everyone's story. Rochelle can do anything. Um, 
Dave says, curious your thoughts, does posting to social media make someone a writer? Um, you know, we can talk about that in a second. And then we have another, Becky says, an all-star lineup right here. So let's get to our next all-star, Miss Kristen Coppers. How did you, what inspired you to start writing? Uh, well, first, Alice, um, I'll be contacting you because my son needs help on his math. I could not figure out uh -huh. today. <laughs> you got it. So, I'm here for we'll you. We'll talk on that here. <laughs> um, but it's weird because I am the English major and math is not my strong suit. Um, but it, but it can of, be, Kristen. We'll, we'll, we'll have to talk on that. <laughs> That's another day. Um, <laughs> and one of the things that we talk about in my class, I teach high school, is in Fahrenheit, uh, or not Fahrenheit, um, 1984, he says two and two equals five because that's what they're told. And so I proved to my students logically, not mathematically, logically, two and two equals five. And I, it's about perspective. And that's what I was focusing on is the idea of perspective. But go, going back to writing, I've been writing since I was a kid. Um, I have all my rejection letters from Teen Beat, Teen Magazine, Seventeen, um, you know, all the articles you turn in, like I kept all those rejections. Um, I started making books out of uh, cereal boxes, you know, the covers, and then you put pieces of paper inside of it. So I've got all these manuscripts that are unpublished that when I wrote as a kid, that my love of writing just, just happened. I don't know where it came from or why, but I just love to write stories. I love to tell a story. And then um, it just continued throughout the years. And I ended up getting a, a master's and a bachelor's in English because I love the fact of writing and I love reading other stories and I love how other characters evolve. And that's just kind of how I got started. Yeah, that's incredible. I love that. And I mean, you could make a book out of your rejection letters. Yeah. And if you don't want it to be too sad, I can help you with the comedy part. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Um, we go to, uh, before we go to the next question, what do you think about Dave's question? Curious your thoughts. Does posting to social media make someone a writer? What do you guys think? Well, anything makes you a writer. I mean, even if you just put it in your own thoughts and don't publish anything in social media, um, there's a lot of self-published authors. My first two books were self-published by me. I went and self-published them myself um, before going to Edgy Match. And even if it's unpublished, an unpublished manuscript, you're still a writer. You know, it's it's you're writing down your thoughts, in, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, Does anybody go ahead? I think there are layers to that question. I I I, I ask myself, what is writing? Um, and I know that I, there are things that I write for me, as Kristen mentioned. There are things that I write that I would want somebody else to read. Um, so I, I believe that writing can happen in many different forms, and it really is communicating. It's telling a story, if you will, of something. Uh, and I think that you can do that, whether you are putting it, you know, with the words on the paper, or if you're saying it with your mouth, I think that's possible. Um, I just think that there's a there's purpose. There has to be purpose attached to it. So if your purpose is to um, create this thing now that's out there that can be utilized to communicate to other people, then you know it's then that's your purpose. But if it's for you, then that's your purpose. But I think that there's many different forms of communicating, even though it may not necessarily be in print. Yeah, I think um, when I think of, are you a writer? Like a few of you, I have been writing my whole entire life. Like writing has always been important to me. I don't know that I was a great writer, but writing is just important. I, I think it's kind of like a mindset. Are you a writer? Mm -hmm. And some of us that write quite a bit, we have a, a more courage to kind of put our thoughts out there on social media. But sometimes we also have a wisdom not to. <laughs> I mean, it goes both ways. Um, it, it just, I think it's more about your mindset. If you think you're a writer and, and that's something that you feel passionate about, then you're a writer. And it doesn't matter where you write because you're writing because you're a writer. So yeah, I agree with that. I agree with what D Dean was saying too. There are levels and there are types of writers. And, and so how do we define writer when we say that if you are a writer or not, like the analogy of, um, are you a runner? Well, do you run? Then, then I guess you're a runner, right? Mm -hmm. So um, I think that sort of is, is the same thing with writing. If you write, you are a writer, if you feel that you're a writer. Um, but there are different levels to that in terms of professional writing. So I think. Yeah. I think and, and so Elizabeth not, asked. Not a black and white question. Right. Elizabeth asks, what's the difference between being an author and a writer, in our opinion? And I think you kind of touched on that. Um, 
it's just anybody can be a writer. Anybody can be an author. Because if you're writing, I wrote a book with my best friend when we were in second grade about frogs. And I considered myself an author and so did she. Um, but I mean, w- you know, when when you're getting paid for it or not, like there's all these different levels. And, you know, um, whether are you self-publishing? Does a, another publisher publish you? It doesn't make you less than. It just makes you in a different level, I think. Mm-hmm. But, there's also yeah. different types of writing, technical writing, business writing, writing for pleasure. You know, there's all these different um, uh, variables that come into play too. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely. Okay, so let's go on to our next question because I want to respect everybody's time. Um, let's talk about your book or books because some of you have more than one book. And so this is your moment to tell us about your book and who would benefit, like who's your audience? Who do you want um, is it for everybody a certain amount? Tell us about it. And um, I'm going to pick the first person, the person I like the most. I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just joking. Um, we laugh. Uh, uh, you, no, you know what? Dean, I'm going to let you go first because you're the only man today. There's got to be some sort of benefit to being the only man in the room with us today. So you go first. Well, um, <laughs> that, you know, that's that's not that's not an honor I often get. So I'll take it. I'll take it where it comes. Um, so I like to say that Journey to the Wine, you know, hold that in front of the camera. If you haven't seen the cover before, I love the cover. Um, Keep it up oh, for a minute. Okay, sorry. Here we go. So I'd There's like to book. say I'd like to say that this is not a book for everybody, but it's a book for anybody if that makes sense, right? And so I, um, the inspiration behind that book was really understanding the good in the bad or the good in everything um, and how all of your collective experiences um, really um, aid in the process of you understanding why. Not only your W-H-Y, but your Y as in the first letter in you. And so the power of you and the power of you is realized you know, through your various obstacles in life. And so I share a lot of different little anecdotal stories in there. Um, you'll hear about my dad a lot, um, just about a lot of the things he did while I was growing up and even things that I didn't know until he passed away um, that have really um, impacted my life um, and really helped me to understand why I am where I am today. Why am I situated in this place? And, uh, and I know that that has to do in large part with the various obstacles that I've had to endure, encounter, experience, um, and thinking, well, this might not necessarily be completely a bad thing if I could change my perspective and look and see, oh, maybe there is something good inside of this. Maybe what that is, is me becoming a better version of myself. And so I realized through writing this book that I'm the only version of myself. I'm the only one that can be me. Just like you all, as authors, as individuals, are the only ones that can be you. And so there, therein lies the quote, you are the only you that will ever be. Your experiences, your story, and your diversity. So knowing that, right, it encourages us, it should encourage us to be the best version of ourselves and to continue to become that person on a daily basis. That's awesome, Dean. I love that. There's so much that you said that I, that resonates with me, and and I love it. I need a copy of your book, so um, I'll be sending you my address. No, I'm just joking. I need to buy it. What, tell us how can we get our hands on your book? Uh, it is certainly available on Amazon, as I believe all of our books might be. Um, it actually is on Barnes and Noble too. Uh, I think it's made to order there, but um, it's a, it's a great book that I think that you can pick up anytime. And I think that's the power of it is. Pick it up today. You can pick it up next year, same day, and it will still be relevant. Um, in tumultuous times, right? It's mm-hmm. it's it, it could be um, that the thing that causes you to reflect or to really kind of step back and pause and do some introspection and wonder uh, or re rekindle or refigure out why, you know. Right. And so it helps us to be able to keep going. So Amazon, Barnes and Noble um, are where you can find. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Dean. We really appreciate that. Journey to the Y and you. All right. We're going to go from like an adult type of book to a kid book. So Alice, will you tell us about your book? Or if you have more books, you you tell us about all of your books. I have one book right now. There's another one coming soon. Um, This is my book. Everyone can learn math. And it's a children's book. And it's a story about a, a little girl who thinks that she is not a math person. She learns through 
um, experiences with her friends and uh, teachers and parents that um, math is not a thing that you just know how to do. You have to struggle with it and, and work with it like other things in life. And so in the end, she realizes that she can learn how to, how to do math if she sticks with it. And the story um, came out of a need uh, because I, I'm very passionate about um, sending this message that um, kids should be talking about math at a very young age at all times. Um, and so I had some, some friends who are parents looking um, for a book that they can share with their kids. You know, um, as a parent to, to young kids, we like to bring books into the house for any kind of uh, struggle that's happening. I don't know if other people are, are the same. I assume so. But, you know, like potty training and you're going to be a big sister, right? You go looking for a book that helps your kid get through the next phase. And so I was looking for one that, that talked about the growth mindset in math, but I couldn't find anything specific to math. Um, there are certainly lots of, of children's books out there about um, perseverance and growth mindset um, in general, and some even connected to other subject areas, but not with math. So that's where the need the need arose, and and so the idea came from that. And um, now it's a a real story, and we're working on uh, the next one, which involves a bit more math um, and not not just the benefit of the growth mindset, but there's a bit more math in the one that's coming as well. Awesome. And I love that. Like Dean was saying that like you have your own unique um, niche and you put that all together, your love of languages, your love of math, you put it together in a unique way that really is very necessary. I know we have your book and we have read it and I don't know if you can see it on top of my head. Are y'all oh, able yeah. to, mm -hmm. um, I mean, it is a book that yes, that we love and, um, so I think it's great and, and, and it really is unique. Just like you said, it has a very special place that um, any elementary classroom should have for sure. Yes. Very so, freeze. Uh, yeah. Go yes. ahead and tell us where can we find your uh, book? So the book is available um, at EduMatch uh, website and Amazon and Barnes and Noble online in the US and Chapters Indigo in Canada if you're Canadian. Um, so you can find it pretty much on any online real, uh, retailer. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. All right. Um, Kristen, I made you go last for the last question. So I'm not going to make you and Rochelle is okay with being last. So, and, and you're kind of like the books I know that you have, Kristen, you have, um, an adult book and a children's book. So you're kind of like the happy medium of all of our worlds right now. So, um, and, and that was a really abrupt, um, segue. I apologize, Alice. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry. I just I apologize. This is my first book chat. So y'all be patient with me. But um so but that is kind of a cool um you have both. You're in both of our worlds, Kristen. So tell us about your books and congratulations on your newest release. Thank you. So the first one I published with Edge Match is Differentiated Instruction and Teaching Profession, which is kind of ironic for what's going on now because you we should we all need to differentiate how we teach. Um, and it's not differentiating your assignments, it's differentiating how you're teaching, not what you're teaching. So it's about the how, not about the what. And one of the biggest um, things that I talk about is the idea about being authentic. And to prove what I say in the book, there is authentic work from my students. And so with their permission, I put it in here, explaining how I differentiate the assignment for all students to learn. Um, as a high school teacher, if I differentiated assignments, uh, I'd have to do 140 of them for as many assignments as I had. And that's just impossible to do for any teacher. And it's not about more work for the teacher, it's about less work. But you wanna make sure all students are able to succeed. And so the book kind of gives an idea of how to motivate the unmotivated, how to collaborate, how to use authentic work, and how to get the students to be engaged and buy into the uh, understanding versus just give them a handout or a worksheet. And so I published this in July of last year with EduMatch. And then the newest release, um, which is was re released on Mother's Day, May 10th, is The Perfect Puppy, which is a children's book based on a black golden doodle. And this story actually came about uh, 14 years ago when we had a West Highland White Terrier. Uh, and everyone told me she was a Toto dog. And she's not because she was a West Highland white terrier not a Karen terrier which is a brown dog 
And so I started writing the, about the book about how they're mixing her up with the wrong type of dog. And then I just put it away. It never, it was just, it literally sat in a file cabinet for 14 years. When um, we got our, when we had to put her down and we got our other dog, or our newest dog, Abby, the black golden doodle, everyone told me she wasn't a golden doodle because she was black. And I said that, that she is. I saw the mother. I saw the father. The mom was a golden retriever. The dad was a black standard poodle. The litter was a mixed litter. It had um, the total it was 10 of them. There were six black dogs, four gold in color. And then when we got there, there was six left. There were four black in color. One had a white belly and the others uh, were a gold tan color. And the golden doodles can actually come in five different colors. And so everyone told me, you got to get your money back. You got to get your money back. And I'm like, it's a golden doodle. And they thought that it was a color, not a breed. And so that's where the story comes around about how Eddie May was not accepted um, because they didn't think she was a golden doodle. And so she got really sad. Okay. Wow. Wow. <laughs> that is, that's incredible. Um, thank you so much. And where can we get your books? Um, just like any of yours, you can find it at Edge of Match Publish Publishing. And then um, it's on Bar barnesandnobles.com and amazon.com. And then um, we, I have another book with Brian Costello coming out probably at the end of this year or, be, or sometime next year in 2021. Awesome. Well, I know that we enjoyed your story when you did a read aloud a couple of months ago. So looking forward to getting your book. And Rochelle, we, I didn't leave. I didn't. You're not the least by any means. You are a great, phenomenal woman. And, and so um, before we close, please um, tell us about your books. You have written like a slew of books in a very short amount of time. You're like incredible. So tell us about you. Oh, you need to stop that. <laughs> Michelle's Wonder Woman books, I think. She is oh, Wonder Woman. I write about Wonder Woman in one of the books, but I mean, <laughs> when as a kid, I wanted to be Wonder Woman. I mean, who didn't, right? Uh, I was that awkward child spinning around in my driveway, like hoping. Um, <laughs> But yeah, no. So my first book was published last April with Edgy Match, and it's um, in other words. Oh, there we go. And I had to laugh because, of course, there had to be a cat coming up over here, <laughs> like you know when Dean was talking. But I did see Kristen's dog there, so I guess we can relate. But uh, <laughs> this book, in other words, quotes that push uh, our thinking is not. It's not just for educators. I mean, it's for anybody to read. But initially, I was looking at quotes and how they were helping me to rethink education. So part of the title was going to have education in it. But once I put it together and got stories from other people in my PLN, members of the four o'clock faculty, wrote chapters, short vignettes. Uh, two of my students co-wrote a chapter in the book as well. I started to see that it wasn't just about education, it was about life. And so tons of quotes, a lot of inspiration from a lot of other educators, which is what I love the most about it. The cover was drawn by one of my ninth grade students. So of course I loved that too. And then my third book that came out, which is my second with Edu Match, uh, came out in December. It's Unconventional Ways to Thrive in EDU. What I love about this cover is that I cut apart the other cover and made a tree instead. So it's kind of something different to do, but hence the title, Unconventional Ways to Thrive in EDU. So it's just a bunch of uh, my own ideas of what I've done in my classroom. If anybody's looking for getting started with project-based learning, Genius Hour, augmented virtual reality, anything like that. And it's not all about the technology either. I mean, there's other ideas for building social emotional learning skills and getting students to really build skills they need for the future. So ideas that I've used, failures that have happened, um, risks that have been taken, and, and hopefully anybody can pick it up. And you don't have to read either of those books from start to finish. Uh, kind of like how Dean said, I mean, it's gonna be relevant. You can pick up any chapter, start wherever you want, put it down and forget about it for a while and go back to it. But uh, yeah, so I hope everybody picks them up and you can get them where everybody said, but I found out you can also get, in other words, online on Target. Oh, that's so cool. Nice. Yeah. But so. you have two other books, right? I do. What are your other books? Do you have them with you? Yes, they're... Uh, <laughs> It's okay. It doesn't have to be just edgy match. It's okay. They're, they're propping up my arm. <laughs> the computer. So they come in handy. Yeah. The, the second one is the future is now, which is with edgy gladiators and it's looking back to move ahead. A, another book that has how I kind of built myself like away from isolation and worked with my students and became more connected, but it has other stories and a chapter written by one of my students. And then my most recent one with ISTE is Chart a New Course. Uh, 
a guide to teaching essential skills for tomorrow's world. And another book that you can just pick up, start anywhere, actually both of the books and just read through them. So yeah, thanks for letting me share those as well. Wow, that is incredible. So thank you so much for sharing everybody. Um, I, I have loved being in the same room with all of you. You guys are phenomenal people and educators. And um, I have learned so much from you just in our, the short time that I've known some of you or, you know, a couple of years that I've known you or whatever. Thank you for everybody that is watching. OB said that she loved the conversation. Just want to sh thank you. Some of the things that before we go, I just wanted to say that if you're considering um, writing or considering a book one of these days, blogging is a really important step. I think that all of us have kind of embraced and that helps us build up our writing and just by a nod of head or a smile. Have you seen the growth from your own blogging, like from when you started till now? Do you feel like you've grown as a writer? I hope yep. so. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we want it for our students. So of course we hope to see it for ourselves too. So I think blogging is an important step. Um, and then also just being able to share it with the world, the world. Maybe the whole world won't see it, but you're putting out there the possibility that others are gonna be reading your words. and. Again, I mean, that's a scary thing. I have always felt really scared about that. Do you agree or? Yes. yes. So um, <laughs> I, yes, but I think a, it, there's a ahead. certain vulnerability that comes mm -hmm. in writing, yes. especially when you're sharing those stories. You are you really don't know what people are going to think. So you do have to kind of think about that, but it's worth it. Right. I agree. And it just, it's still a little bit scary for me, but I, I love it. Um, and so those are some things that we all grow from. It's taking that risk, putting it out there and sharing the world. Like you guys have said, your important message, that message that began inside of you, the message that was in our heads for so long, we finally put it out on paper. So um, kudos to all of you. Thank you so much for coming to the first Mel Mel's book chat. And um, I hope that someone sees this and takes interest in your book and, um, and connect with us. We're very easy to connect with. So um, thank you guys so much for watching today and we'll see you again. Bye. 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 Thanks.